Hello, and in this video I'd like to explain a bit more about derivatives in the new calculus. Specifically, I'd like to explain a bit more about the auxiliary equation, I'd like to show you how to take derivatives of slightly more difficult functions, and I'd like to prove and present the differentiation rules. So let's get started. So in the last video I showed you this definition for derivatives, and I presented how this difference equation can be broken down in a part containing only x, and a remaining expression that simplifies to zero, containing x, n, and m, where the stuff containing just x represents the slope of the parallel secant line, which is also the slope of the tangent line, and the stuff containing x, n, and m represents a difference in slope, but since there is no difference in slope between the parallel secant and the tangent, it must be zero. What I'd like to show clearly is exactly how we know that this expression here represents a difference in slope. The reason is because if we choose any random nm pair that doesn't necessarily produce a parallel secant line, then what we'll have written over here is the slope of the parallel secant plus something that's non-zero. This is therefore the difference in slopes between the non-parallel secant line that was just created and the tangent line. And since we want n m pairs that create parallel secant lines, we need this expression to simplify to zero. As a matter of fact, there is a theorem that relates slopes of non-parallel secant lines to the slope of the tangent. This is the historic geometric theorem, and is also a topic for a different video. So now I have explained, I guess, in a bit more detail why the expression in x, n, and m is zero. This auxiliary relationship between x, n, and m must also hold with the n, m pair of 0, 0. This is because the n, m pair, 0, 0, is signature of the tangent line. And of course there is no difference between the slope of the tangent line and the slope of the tangent line, right? This is a powerful realisation for several reasons. For a start, it allows us to check auxiliary equations. Secondly, it gives us a sort of hack to find derivatives of functions that don't easily simplify to functions containing just x and a remaining expression in x, n, and m. Thirdly, and most incredibly, it helps in finding points of inflection. This is a picture of the curve described by the function x minus 1 cubed plus 1. An inflection point is a point that the curve crosses where the curve changes direction, so to speak. For this curve, it is easy to see that the inflection point is at x equals 1. Notice how there is no tangent line possible at the inflection point. This is because in the last video we saw that part of the definition of a tangent line is that it doesn't cross the curve, and any line that we draw at the inflection point must cross the curve somewhere, so there can't be any tangent lines at the point of inflection. Now let me show you exactly how to realise the inflection point based on the auxiliary equation. The derivative of this function looks like this, and the associated unsimplified auxiliary equation looks like this. Now, if we simplify this auxiliary equation and solve for either n or m, which I'm doing right now, now what we're going to notice is that if we try to find n m pairs at the point of inflection, there are no n m pairs that satisfy the auxiliary equation besides 0, 0. This means there is a point of inflection. At any other non-inflection point, of course, 0, 0 is a pair that solves the auxiliary equation, but it's definitely not the only one. Here is an example of another nm pair that solves the auxiliary equation as well. So only at points of inflection is the only possible nm pair 0, 0. Finally, I'd like to prove and present the differentiation rules. This is what the differentiation rules look like, and I'd like to prove them. So let's start with the sum rule, which helps us find derivatives of functions that have been added together. So the way we prove that is by distributing the negative sign, and by rearranging, and by splitting the fraction like this. And when we simplify the difference equations, we can set n and m to 0, and guarantee that we have the slope of the tangent line. So that is uh, the proof of the sum rule. Next I'm going to prove the product rule, which, uh, like the name implies, helps uh, find derivatives of functions that have been multiplied together. So the way we prove that is uh, by first adding and subtracting this term over here so we don't change the expression. We factor out, we split the fractions like this. 
we simplify the difference equations and we evaluate at an nm pair of 0, 0. So that's the product rule proven. Lastly, I'm going to show you the chain rule, which helps in differentiating the composition of functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply and divide by this difference of functions. What we're going to notice is that the right fraction simplifies to this. And we're going to make the following substitution for the difference quotient on the left. And we're going to simplify that fraction. And now we're going to evaluate at the nm pair, which is 0, 0. Notice how this forces the p and the q to be 0, 0 as well. So we can set pq pair in this expression to 0 as well. And there we have proven the chain rule.